This is Radio Ukraine International with the weekly program Doing Business, hosted by Rodion Drzeznevsky and produced by Konstantin Lavrentyuk. Doing Business covers current economic developments in and concerning Ukraine and gives topical information as well as immediate and longer-term economic forecasts. It is what we think might give you food for thought and help you see Ukraine through the economic angle. Ukrainian education is considered to be one of the best in the world, given its long and rich history. The first higher educational institutions opened in Ukraine in the 17th century and from the beginning attracted students from all over the European continent. Experienced teachers and professors, a great diversity of specialties and European standards of quality have always made Ukrainian education popular with students worldwide. In 2005, Ukraine joined the Bologna process, which was a positive step towards integrating Ukrainian education into the European higher education area. Ukrainian higher schools provide courses in Ukrainian, Russian or English. International students have the opportunity to study at more than 240 universities and colleges and acquire specializations in different fields of science. Every year they admit students from more than 150 countries. Their graduates and postgraduates receive the following degrees Bachelor, Master, Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Science. Foreigners can apply to Ukrainian higher schools with accredited curricula in the following ways. Twice a year for the degrees of junior, bachelor, bachelor and master, before at the beginning of the academic semester, that is until the 1st of November and until the 1st of March respectively. During the academic year, for postgraduate, doctoral and clinical studies, medical residency, the preparatory faculty program and the academic mobility program. Dr. Olena Shapovalova, director of the Ukrainian State Center for International Education under the Education and Science Ministry, says that the center's main mission is to increase Ukraine's competitiveness in the international market of educational services. Dr. Shapovalova kindly answered my questions on the topic Does the country still maintain its high level of education and reputation compared to the standard we had, say, seven or ten years ago? Could you tell us about the latest international student programs? Well, I think our country is even doing better than seven or ten years ago. <laughs> Let us say the truth, because we are part of the Bologna system and uh, we have so many new programs, English medium programs. So we have very good collaboration with the European Union educational programs like Erasmus Plus, and we have so many successfully going on projects on campus that was before this, and they have very good results. So the educational programs of our Ukrainian universities are really very quality, high quality, and we have many professors that also can speak English and can provide quality education in English. Right now, we have more than 75, 76 even, thousand foreign students studying in Ukraine from more than 155 countries in the world. And uh, that's really a big uh, number because Ukraine is not so big country as the United States, for example. However, we really have very good uh, education in medicine. The students can not only study uh, in classrooms, but also they can do practice and that is rather unique. For them, we have many good humanitarian 
part uh, projects uh, that have double degree programs with the European Union countries and other countries, universities. And that's really very interesting, I guess, for foreign students that choose Ukraine as their study destination. Great. So you said that basically Ukraine made even great progress for the last few years. So what exactly caused such changes in uh, our educational system? Well, first of all, that is the reform of higher education. We have a new law of higher education, which said that we have new levels of education. That is bachelor, master, and PhD level. Before we had, you know, specialist uh, degrees and uh, candidate of science degree. Nowadays it's PhD, uh, bachelor, and master. That is more understandable for the world. And uh, the programs also meet all of the criteria of the European Union. Ukraine is a part of ECAR organization, and our center is also part of ECAR, and we're very happy about this. That is European Quality Assurance uh, Register, which really check all the programs and uh, register them in the European uh, Register Quality Education. Uh, we have quality assurance organizations right now in Ukraine, like the National Agency of Quality Assurance, and that makes also our educational programs much better and much uh, monitored and controlled in some way. That is also inspire our universities to do their best, not only for the cooperation with the European universities, but also for themselves. Because they do know that inside Ukraine, there will also be competition. And uh, as the new reform, they give money for those universities who will show the best results. So all universities are trying their best and uh, we really see the progress. So basically, we try to reach these international standards, and that's pretty cool. What qualifications and occupations are the most popular with foreign students here in Ukraine? You mentioned medicine, oh. as far as I remember. So, yeah. Yeah. More than 50% are medical science, oh. all kind of dentistry, medicine, um, pharmacology, but this is like more medicine, more than 50%. We also have management that is very popular among foreign students, international economics, international law, what we are very happy about. This is also the civil engineering courses, oil and gas, maritime engineering, and uh, education. So that's uh, the most popular specialties among mm. foreign students. Students from what countries mostly study here in Ukraine? Let us talk about the top 10 students yeah, of origin. That would be better, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Morocco, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Nigeria, China, Turkey, Egypt, and Israel. Mm-hmm. And Uzbekistan, top 10. A variety of countries. That is not like only some region or like it's not Africa only or it's not the European Union. Or it's not post-Soviet countries only. Yeah countries yeah we have very good diversity in this so do they have all the needed conditions for the decent studying here we hope so because the universities they actually take care of the students they do the adaptation programs and uh, all kind of this uh, very specifically oriented sometimes programs like we have for example india so one more than eighteen thousand students are studying here in ukraine most of the Indian students, uh, they prefer to study medicine. We have more than 80,000 Indian students studying in Ukraine, and um, most of them are studying medicine. At the end of their study, they will need to do the MCI, Medical Council of India exam, and the uh, MCI exam is very important for them. So universities do provide the MCI coaching at the very last years of their study so that they prepare them exactly for what they need. Mm-hmm. If we talk about that countries. They mostly study international law, international tourism, international economics. And uh, also the universities, they give special courses on how it is important to develop the relations between the post-Soviet countries, so-called post-Soviet countries. What they can do when they come back to their countries, how they can use their knowledge from Ukrainian university, implement it in their countries and be successful in their country of origin and worldwide. So that's really, I think, make a very good sense for the students so that they know that they all not only study some you know, particular program, but this program will be rather flexible, continuing about their reform in higher education. Students can choose uh, more than 20% of their classes and lectures. So they have the chance 
and they have the variety to choose from. So for them, it's also makes some sense. So they don't want to study, you know, Ukrainian law. They will study Ukrainian law for sure. But anyway, yeah. if they don't study some particular, you know, Ukrainian law and, you know, in uh, economics, but they want to study international law and economics, they have a chance to choose this within the education program, make the best of uh, studying Ukraine. How would you explain that phenomenon that Ukraine is that special exactly for these countries that you have already mentioned? I think Ukraine is rather open because, um, for example, we don't have Korea here, but the Korean students are studying um, art and music in Ukraine. And uh, those universities that have Korean students, they try to make their best for them. And they also study Korean music in Ukrainian universities. So they make this, include this subject, include this course in their curriculum. So I don't think that it is only for Indian students you can study medicine in when you're from India. Of course not. That is done for all of the students. And what I also would like to mention is that I think international students are very open and they are very frank in their requests uh, or in their, what they're looking for. I have met so many Ukrainian and foreign students who, during my five years of uh, being director of the center. We have a huge difference because when you meet with Ukrainian students, they usually ask, you know, our stipendium is not so good. We want some better scholarships. We want some more financing. We want this, we, like we want some money. But when you meet foreign students, they're not talking about money. They're paying money for their education. So they're requesting, we want all courses online. We want electronic books. We want uh, those books that uh, our colleagues from the United States are studying with. So we want you uh, to buy these books for us. So because we want this modern, all contemporary literature, we want access to the inter uh, international courses that are available mm -hmm. through the universities. And that is really something really different, and it's very pleasant, I think, point. Because universities yeah. try to meet these uh, requests, you know, and they try to do their best. The, well, my, I think all of, the, all of our medical universities have access to the international libraries, mm -hmm. and the students have access online also to the international libraries worldwide, and they can also search for these necessary books so, and this free for them. Just, I do remember I was talking to different international students here in Ukraine, and they all mentioned what you have just said. But apart from that, they also said about the perfect balance that our universities reach between the quality of the study and the price, and still affordability of the education here in Ukraine. Uh, plays pretty important role. So I guess all the aspects of such things, they do play this really decent role in uh, solving this. But apart from that, I have one more question, that different countries, it means like different level of education and preparation at school in foreign countries. Is there any problem with this for Ukrainian universities? And how is it usually solved? Are there any preparatory courses that could prepare them for the standards that we have exactly here in Ukraine? All the students have the entrance exams. Mm -hmm. They might be oral or written, it doesn't matter, and they all go through the entrance exams. So when the university sees results of these entrance exams, they might propose for the student to go through the preparatory course, which is usually eight months. Or well, they can say that, for example, your marks are all good, but, you know, you are not so good in English or your mathematics is not so good. So you can study the three months course on mathematics, particularly in our university, or you can do some particular course in other university and then come back to us. We have preparatory courses. We have especially design courses for international students, which might be from three months up to eight months. And this allows students to enter the particular university uh, which he or she was dreaming about. Should a young person decide to study in Ukraine, what does he or she need to do? Where to start? What steps have to be taken before coming to Ukraine? So I'm just imagine myself. Uh, I'm listening to this program. I'm the foreign student. Yes, and I get the absolutely new information about this amazing country. And I realize that I want to study here. What are the steps that I should take to find the right place to know more about enrollment process and so on. Could you describe all, all these steps that I have to take as the foreign student? 
Uh, sure, you can go to the website study in Ukraine Gov UA in the government domain and get all necessary information there. You can search for the course, you can search for the university, you can che check the real websites of the universities. I think it's very important because sometimes when you're abroad, some fraud companies may create, you know, fake websites even in Shevchenko University, for example. But then it turns to be that it is totally different website far away from the Shevchenko University. So they can use this official source of the information through the website study in Ukraine Gov UA. They can get uh, all information about study programs and they can apply directly through the university website or through the website of Ukrainian State Center for International Education. We actually encourage all of the students to be in touch directly with the universities. So it makes the process easier for them. Uh, mm -hmm. However, if there is any problem, the university is not replying for them or they are hesitating, they can always contact us and uh, we'll try to help them and our best. So I think it's not uh, so complicated. It's the same when you choose any university. They can also check the QS ranking for the best universities uh, in the world. We have uh, seven universities. Ukrainian universities is there. You can also check the QS ranking for the best uh, European universities and you will also meet even more Ukrainian universities, um, the same in other rankings. So that is what students usually check. We have made a survey of Ukrainian among foreign students and we have asked them, uh, how did they choose Ukraine? Why, what was the reason? And more than 50% said the reason was uh, the feedback from our friends. More than 50%. So for them, their friends were more important than all of our materials, the promotion companies, information from the official websites. So it's really very important. You can ask your friends if you have them that is in Ukraine, or you can be the first one that will actually suggest Ukraine for your other friends. You're listening to Radio Ukraine's weekly program, Doing Business. What language is usually used for teaching international students here in Ukraine? Now I have the question more about the organizational part. I'm again, I'm that foreign student. I'm not sure what language is used here for teaching. Yeah. So basically, could you tell me more about this process? How well teachers, Ukrainian teachers in general, overall know the international language in uh, our universities? They should. <laughs> they should know. <laughs> in any case, right now, uh, we have only two languages of study. And this is Ukrainian and English. So all of these uh, professors who are doing their PhD, they need to know English. That is also part of our new reform. And it is also mentioned there. So we can say that all of our professors will be open to, to foreign students and they can communicate with foreign students. However, of course, we have some old generation, which is really very good professors, uh, well-known professors all over the world. However, their English might not be so good. Some of them studied. German, for example. What could French. be done in such case? That's a pretty interesting question because like pe elderly people, they have such huge experience and they could sometimes, not sometimes, but even most of the time, they could share the information that the young teacher couldn't do. Is it possible, I mean, is it a common situation that they are provided with some translator, let's say, for foreign students? Happens with the interpreter, they have some kind of uh, master classes, especially it happens with some practical issues. When we need, for example, a good surgery, uh, then we can ask a well-known professor to show this operation for the students, but maybe this professor might not be so fluent in English. Mm -hmm. So they always have interpreter with them to help the students understand what is going on and be a part of the process in some way. I also would like to say that we are now changing the law and we will have uh, French medium and Russian medium uh, classes also. So it will be more flexible for foreign students because the universities would have the right to provide the study program in any language, in any foreign language which the student desires. How is the Ukrainian language taught? How long does it usually take them to learn Ukrainian? Next question is going to be about preparatory courses. So you said that basically teacher, they know the English language, but still some of the classes are in Ukrainian. Are there any preparatory language course before the study here in Ukraine? 
Of course, students have two choices. They can study in English or in Ukrainian. If they would like to study in Ukrainian or the program they want to study is not available in English, they can always go through the preparatory course, which is usually eight months, and they will know Ukrainian language on the proper level to continue their study in the main course in the desired specialty, the warrior specialty. And um, they also can, if they speak English and the specialty is available in English medium, they can study the whole years of their study in English. So it's not something like you study only the first year in English and then it will be in Ukrainian. No way. So if they start the English medium program, it's just all English medium program till the end. Of course, they will be studying Ukrainian language, the language of uh, social communication mm -hmm. in Ukraine. So they will be studying it as a part of their program. However, it won't be every day and it will be only for those students who would like to all of foreign students <laughs> we hope that all of them would like to know how to communicate in ukrainian language mm -hmm. and they will feel comfortable in ukraine it will help their adaptation during their study if they can speak some ukraine now we are facing the situation the pandemic situation and the studying process it goes pretty challenging for students to study how is the education going now how are the things going with online education? Could you tell more about this state of pandemic study, let's call it like that? I don't think it's really something challenging for the students because students are get used to, to use all online uh, facilities. It's not like, uh, you know, school children when they face some challenges. For students, it's not like this. So all of the foreign students uh, also have the same rights as Ukrainian students, and they also study on distant learning when it is forbidden to come to Ukraine or something. Right now we are open totally, so all of the classes are offline classes. And uh, foreign students have no right to study on distant learning when we talk about medicine, pharmacy, mm -hmm. and dentistry. Right. So anyway, they will need to be in class. Even in the pandemic uh, period, some classes were online, but all of the practical classes they will have right now when it is offline classes and they will have all of their practical hours. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, that, it doesn't mean that uh, they had uh, their practice online. No way. So they will have their real practice because it's very important to have good doctors, to have good civil engineers, you know. We all have, want to have the safe bridges and uh, healthy bodies, <laughs> so that's mm -hmm. why it's very important. You're listening to Radio Ukraine's weekly program, Doing Business. What about social networking? Is your center presented in any of them, such as Facebook or even Instagram? Well, we are. We are on Facebook. Uh, Facebook study in Ukraine, go I think mm -hmm. that's that. We are also on Instagram, but we have just started our Instagram, so it's really not so well developed as a Facebook. But the students can also find us, and the Ukrainian State Center for International Education, study in Ukraine, GOVA, join us and get all the recent information, all the information about the life of students, foreign students in Ukraine, mm -hmm. and be the part. That ends the first part of our program about the Ukrainian State Center for international education. That was Radio Ukraine's weekly program, Doing Business.